Hello everyone. This is my English 473 desktop publishing final project presentation. Uh, the goal of my final project was to take XML and to output it to non-XML formats. So uh, rich text format, HTML, PDF, uh, ASCII, basically a text file. So what is XML? Well, XML is extensible markup language. And I'll show you an example of it right here. It's a very, very basic file that helps segment and put things into a hierarchy. It's very good for storing information. So I've put a sample resume in here. You can see we have resume and a closing tag that's denoted by that little slash there. Now within it we have a multiple title tags and each of these titles is going to have other tags in it. In this case, my information, all the stuff that I would put in a resume. Now this looks nice and neat, but it's not very pretty. So this is where extensible style sheet language, or XSL, comes into play. So here we are. We've got our XSL file here. We have our resume example as our header one, or our title here. Now we have a loop here. So for each title within our resume, it's going to make us a nice purple div banner up on the top with field one information populating it. Then we'll create a div with a paragraph inside of it. And the paragraph will have the rest of our field information and spaced apart by break lines. Now, why would we want to convert XML to another format when we have XSL? Well, sometimes, especially in work, um, when we're making something for a client, they'll want the output as HTML, PDF, a rich text file. Um, you kind of just do what the client wants you to do, and you might have a, another reason than that, but for a young programmer, we kind of go where the money is. So they ask for a specific output, we put it into that output. So my initial plan of attack was to install an Apache server with Apache FOP and this would carry out all the file conversions. Um, I am not very well versed in Java and Apache technologies so I decided to use Microsoft C Sharp since I'm a little more familiar with it. I also know that the server may or may not run on an older version of Java which is not the best for security reasons. So this might be a safer option as well, but your mileage may vary. Now, the .NET framework will contain tools baked into it that'll allow us to take XSL and convert it to a text file, a HTML file, or a rich text file. So I could not find a decent plugin for XML to PDF for the life of me. Um, some of the ones that I've tried required you to do different XSL styles that made your output look pretty funky. Uh, some of the more elegant solutions cost money, which might not be feasible for somebody just trying to do a one-off conversion. So my route was to take an open source tool, uh, WK HTML to PDF, and to use that to convert our HTML output that we're going to get from running our code and turn it into a PDF using that route. So without further ado, we'll dive into it. Now here we have the code that converts our XSL and our XML file into a rich text format file and into an HTML file. So I will go ahead and get that selected and we'll hit start. Now it's going to ask us to enter in the path that we want for the file. So we'll go there, our users. Now I'm just entering this in because I know that these files for my example are going to be in the debug folder of my C-sharp project, but that might not be the case for your project if you're following along at home. 
So just bear that in mind. Documents, Visual Studio, Projects, we know it's XML2, RTF, bin, debug, and we got our XSLT file one dot XSLT. Now you'll say, well, you were saying XSL, why are you saying XSLT now? Well, XSLT stands for Extensible Stylesheet Language Transform, which is it transforms the XML using the XSL language within it to create a new output. Um, and our usage of this, it's going to be basically the same as HTM to HTML. Different file extension, but they do essentially the same thing. So we'll go ahead and hit enter there. Now it's going to ask us to enter the full path of our XML file. Now I already know that it's going to be in the same path as our XSL file. So if you have an up directional button, just hit that in command line. And it'll bring us our previous input. Here we'll put XML file one dot XML. Hit enter. There we go. So our program ran without any hiccups at all, which is nice. So we'll go down to our debug folder, and here we are. We have our output one RTF. I'll open that up for you. We have our nice purple banner up top here with all of our information in a neat little paragraph underneath it, and that continues down to the bottom here to our references. And we also have our output. Now you might be wondering why is this gray when this is white? Well, it's going to interpret the styling a little bit differently. So your mileage might vary. If you have a crazy color that you wanted to have, you might have to find another route to get that to work. But everything else within it looks pretty close. So we're going to call that a victory. So we'll exit out of that. Now the next step, converting from an XML to PDF, I told you we're going to have a little bit of a an in-between on that. So for this, we download WK HTML PDF. So you go ahead and just install that. I have it installed in my program files folder, which will be useful when we run this command in just a little bit, as it runs in the command line. So all we need to do is take our WK HTML PDF executable, run this command, enter in the website that you want to convert, and you enter in the file name of what you want. So I already have this up on my Mavdisk website. So I'm going to go ahead and get our command prompt up. There we are. Now it might be a little intimidating to run a tool from command line, but I'll show you it's going to be super easy. So we're just going to type in CD for change directory, and then we just type in the new directory of what we want. So we'll go C program files WK HTML two PDF and I know for certain that our executable that we want is going to be in the bin folder. So we'll just navigate to that folder right away. And if you want to check if you're not sure whether it's in here or not, you can just type in DIR or dir for directory. Hit enter and it'll show us that we have WK HTML to PDF right in the middle there. So we're going to go ahead, since we're already in the correct path, and call that to pdf.exe. There we go. So we're going to have a little help file here. Shows you a number of the different options that we can use. Gray scale, in case you want it in black and white instead of colors for whatever reason. But we're not really concerned about that right now. So we just need to specify at least one input file, which is going to be our website here and exactly one output file. So only one PDF can be made at a time with this. So we'll type in WK HTML to PDF map disk edu or whatever website you want to use for this example. Output to.html 
and we'll go ahead and enter in our path that we want. And I'm just going to put this to my desktop. And I'll just call it Hello Dr. Nord in case he's watching. And there we go. So we'll hit enter. And it'll do all the conversions down here and it'll let you know when it's done. So I'm going to hit exit and we'll go to our desktop. Ah, here we go. Our Hello Dr. Nord PDF. Let's make this full screen. There we go. So we can see it pretty much takes the styling from the web page and basically an exact copy. Outstanding. All right, so we'll close out of that and we'll go down to here. Now we have our XML to text file conversion. Now this is a little different. Um, XSL compiled transform is basically a very bundled up converter so we don't get to see anything that's in there it just does the conversion and we, I just take its word for it that it works um, for our XML to text conversion however we want to make sure that all of these little tags here are stripped out of it if we were to just do a straight text or XML to text conversion it would include all of these tags it would literally take it line for line and just convert it to a text file which is not what we want we want to have all of our inside information here but strip away all this unneeded tag information so we're gonna basically do the same thing for our other program it's gonna ask us for input for the XML file it's gonna ask us where we want to put it so we'll go ahead and select that up here and hit start so there we go and I'll move that out of the way in case you want to take a closer look at the code there so please enter the full path so we know that our XML file in this instance is going to be in our bin folder again so I'll get to type in here sure that's capital XML file one dot XML so there we go that's the path there now it's going to ask us to enter the full path including the file name of the text file you wish to output so we'll just put this one out to the desktop for simplicity's sake and we'll just call this one Hello, Dr. Nord. Dot txt. Oh, and as we can see here, a bit of a problem. It's not like in our path. Looks like I missed. Oh, misspelled studio. Here we go. Sorry about that. I'll run that one more time. And that's why I said earlier that it's very important to pay attention to the command line. Users, Levi, documents, visual studio, spelled correctly this time, projects, XML2, RTF. XML file one dot XML. Whew, there we go. All right. So now we're going to enter in our desktop again. There we go. And it just goes to show that even though you might know everything, you can still make a problem. 
and I of course don't know everything. Okay, so exited with code zero, which means no problems. So let's go on over to the desktop. And there we are. Hello, Dr. Nord.txt was put onto the desktop. And there we go. All of our XML tags are stripped out. Everything is nice and tidy within here. Here we go. So the environment new lines made sure to separate everything out. If you weren't putting it to a new line every single time, it'd print off and it's a gigantic line that would stretch all the way across the screen. Um, would not be very readable. So I hope this was useful to anyone who is watching. Uh, it's not very simple. I, it just took me a while to find it. Uh, if I were to do anything differently, if I were to go back in time and start this again, I would have definitely started off with C Sharp right off the bat. Um, it just has better built-in tools. It's a lot easier to work with than Java, in my opinion. And it's a heck of a lot easier than trying to set up a server at home, more or less. So. Hopefully this has helped you out and has enlightened you. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope the rest of your day goes well.